everybody, I'm Kevin Rush, television critic for your TV Weekly Log. And I'm Dan Clark, TV critic for Dial Digest, and we are on the television. Tonight we'll look at the school board-operated public channel and their most highly rated program, English for the Foreign Born and Undocumented Alien. And we'll take a special look at children's programming, a representative of the new breed of children's cartoons called Beverly Hills Teenage Mutant Ninja Ponies, a game show just for kids called Filthy Dirty I Double Dare You, and a show that's so hip and happening that even adults watch it. The live action Saturday morning, Gigantic Herman's Playground. We'll have some real live kids here with us and find out what they think about them, as well as going to our man on the street, Nat Caulfield, to see what other kids think about TV. And we'll tell you what we think of the X-rated public access show from New York City called Midnight Nudes. But first up, a cop show with a twist called M Superior. The hour-long action-adventure series answers the, until now, rhetorical question, what if the Equalizer was a nun? This creature of habit, so to speak, is tough and sassy, and she's got a streetwise nephew like so many other TV crime stoppers before her. Let's take a look at a typical episode of M Superior. By the way, the M stands for mother. Oh, my. Excuse me. Oh, you're right. Excuse me. Oh, I nice. heard your message for you here, M. Superior. Oh, thank you, Patricia. Hmm, it's from the mayor. Oh, no. Oh, Dina. Saints preserve us. Cancel my daiquiri, Patricia. Is something wrong? We don't call you my streetwise nephew for nothing. There's another godless creature out there threatening to turn the city of Los Angeles into a pile of rubble. And the mayor's counting on me to stop him. Thanks for the beer nuts. Lovely meeting you, dearie. You know what I say. Any girlfriend of my nephews is a girl. Oh, never mind. Come on, JB. <laughs> Soon I will rule the entire city of Los Angeles. Then the whole state of California. Then the continental United States. And then... And the ocean, boss? Yeah, the ocean, too. And nobody can stop me. Nobody! <laughs> Those are the slime buckets we're looking for, J.B. Are you sure, Aunt Mother? J.B., I told you before. Don't call me Aunt Mother. You're supposed to be streetwise. Now get smart. Call me Aunt M. 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 Dorothy, Dorothy. <laughs> I love that gag. <laughs> Come on. Let's go bust some law-breaking butt. This sister's got a good sense of humor, but when she gets tough, watch out. Please, Slambos. You just met your one-way ticket to purgatory. Freeze. Get him, boys. <laughs> I went to Catholic school, so there aren't many things on earth as scary as a six-foot nun with a ruler in her hand threatening to bust some butt. It breaks the monotony of a typical cop show with its unusual casting, I guess. And the real-life nun in the lead does handle the action-adventure stuff pretty darn well. But like I said, it scares me, so I don't think I'll watch it again. Well, the quirky casting sold the show for me, and I hope it starts a trend in casting traditional figures in untraditional roles. Like what? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, uh, preacher oil tycoons, rabbi deep sea divers. You're over-medicated. <laughs> Our next show is seen only on the East Coast in what David Letterman likes to call the tri-state area. But copycats may be cropping up on your public access channel soon. It's a talk show with a twist. And I do mean a twist. It's called Midnight Nudes. And it stars a guy that looks like Larry from the Three Stooges, and he's wearing nothing but a smile, as my mother used to say. What do you say we take a look at some nude people? Don't be frightened. We've covered those parts you don't want to see with little black boxes. Our guests tonight are Janice and Todd Bedebauer, authors of the book The Nudist Colonists. Hello, Janice. Hello, Todd. Hi. Hello. You both look very nice nude. Thanks. Thank you. So do so you. you do. Now, in your book, you put forth hypotheses that the colonists who settled the New World actually did so in the nude? Yes, that's right. The pilgrims were nudists, there's no doubt about it. 
Now, Todd and I have done exhaustive archaeological excavation at Plymouth Rock, and we have not found one single thread of a pilgrim outfit. Not a single thread. Wow. What about Christopher Columbus and his group? Nudists. Betsy Ross, William Penn. The naked as shaybirds. Yikes. Talk about scary. This show made me all clammy while I was watching it. Now, I saw the version without those nice little black boxes, and let me tell you, it was not a pretty picture. I don't even like seeing myself in the nude. So you can bet the next time I find myself in New York City, I will not be tuning in to midnight nudes. Well, what's wrong with this isn't the fact that they're nude or the fact that nobody on the show is really that attractive. It's the single-mindedness of the host. I mean, why do they always have to talk about nudity? Isn't being nude enough? It, now, I mean, if, this, if the host was more nonchalant about it, I might watch again. But as it stands now, I agree with you, Kevin. I ain't watching this show ever again. Good for you. We'll be back with our special look at children's programming, a visit with our man on the street, and the instructional show, English for the Foreign Born and Undocumented Alien, right after this. <laughs>